I'm trying, to, I'm trying to scratch my face, my dress. Uh, John Murray. <laughs> You're giving post-Super Bowl sexy on a Monday. <laughs> yeah. What, what's this you're wearing, Sherry? What, what's this you're wearing today? I am wearing, I got this as a gift. We had our uh, season winner of uh, Project Runway. Bishmi Cromarty. Bishmi Cromarty was on, and he presented me with a gift, and it is this dress. He <laughs> created this. So it's that one right there. That thing right there. Oh my God. Oh my God. So that. Oh. Uh, thank you, Vishme. So I said I was gonna wear it. Now here's the thing about uh, fashion and Fashion Week. It's it, it's it's I'm a little confined uh, in the shoulders, you know. So it's kind of like, but fashion, you know, you have to. There's some things that happen in fashion. So, and in, in this case, I can't move in the fashion, but <laughs> it's okay. So I'm not gonna do a Patty Labelle. I'm feeling. <laughs> it's not gonna, but I love the dress. It's very sexy you with look the amazing. with the leather. You look so thank amazing. you, Vishme. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, can I tell you, I know everybody is tired this morning because the Super Bowl. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That Super Bowl was on late and it went into overtime. Okay, I am used to this, watching the Super Bowl in Los Angeles. I throw Super Bowl parties, but in LA it starts at three. Uh, so out here, it started at 6, 6.30, something like that. And, um, you know, everybody's in bed at a decent hour but we, in L.A., but in New York City, it was went on to almost, like, 11 o'clock. And I know that they went into overtime last night, and I fell asleep. I said, I'm gonna find out who wins in the morning. I was so tired. Oh, my gosh. So I found out this morning that the Kansas City Chiefs are Super Bowl champs once again. It actually, oh my gosh, they're going into the overtime, everything. Patrick Mahomes led the team to victory over the 49ers. It was 25 to 22. It was close because I think it was like seconds that you thought the 49ers were going to get it. And I have to say, I felt bad for the 49ers because they had worked so hard. They haven't gotten to this place in 40 years. So I just, I was like, this is when a man's supposed to be crying. All of them, like, you know, and this is the first time a team has won back-to-back -back Super Bowls in almost 20 years. So, it was a lot of stuff going on. I just found out today that there was, in, at the Sherry Show, there was a Super Bowl office pool. Now, last year, it was the office pool, and I won. I won the pool. I put my name on the sheet, but I forgot to give them the money. <laughs> so, do you think... Nobody even came to me about the pool this year. <laughs> they, everybody keeps talking about who won in the pool. I said, nobody even came and knocked on my door. And everybody kept reminding me that, you know, Sherry got the reputation of not paying up. So, <laughs> next year, we gonna change that. I'm gonna pay. I'm prepaying, all right? <laughs> So anyway, Taylor Swift was there to support her man, Travis Kelsey. 
She brought actress Blake Lively and rapper Ice Spice. Now, this is what I love about Ice Spice, because every time I looked at Ice Spice, she seemed confused about football. <laughs> like, in one picture, you see Taylor explaining the game to her. Because <laughs> Ice Spice is like, I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> then it was another picture, Ice Spice is still looking confused. <laughs> And then, and like, everybody's going, yeah! And then in his last picture, Ice Spice, look, there you go, confused again. But the last picture, Ice Spice, she posed for that dog on camera. She looked at <laughs> Look at that. Ice Spice is like, I don't know what's going on. Oh, the camera, all right. <laughs> But I said, I think Ice Spice was there because she was like, look, Taylor, when is your man gonna introduce me to one of these players? But, and another thing I said, why is Ice Spice carrying her purse? She's got her purse on. And I'm just like, who you think gonna steal your money? <laughs> she got a purse right on the shoulder. Like, Ice, you in a $2 million box. So everybody in the box is family and friends. And then, when I think of it, though, them the ones that'll steal from you, so... <laughs> I mean, the main ones! <laughs> it's always that member in your family. You gotta talk to them about, why are you wearing... That's my outfit that you wear. <laughs> uh, so after the win, Taylor ran to celebrate with Travis oh. Kelsey. Look at that. Look at the way they kissing. Boy, I said, boy, I know you got back from Tokyo and you tired, but that ain't what you gonna be telling Travis after a win. <laughs> Okay, so I'm the only one that thought that. All right. Um, so despite the rumors, he did not propose to her. So Taylor kissed him right there. She gave him a big old kiss, and I, I swear I could see the lyrics to her future song as she kissed Travis. So, the, you know, I like them. I like them. I know for the men here, y'all not gonna get the plays. I didn't understand nothing that the people were saying about the plays. But I, what I will tell you is Usher won the halftime show. Usher, baby! Let me tell you! Look at this. I can't, I can't do nothing with my arms. Uh, we represent the Lollipop Twins. That's <laughs> <laughs> but Ursha brought the Dirty South to Las Vegas. I told you he was going to do it. He took off his shirt. He was peeled off that shirt. Let me tell you, I don't know. I think the first time in history it was stripper poles in the halftime show. He came out there dancing on skates. And he shared, look, came out there. And then he shared the stage with special guests, including singer Her. Now, let me tell you about Her. Her was so incredible. When I tell you, this young lady is so talented. She plays so many instruments, and she commanded the stage without saying a word. I swear, she played that doggone, I don't know what kind of guitar it is she was playing, but I felt like Prince had his hand on her shoulder. She was so good. Stole, to me, her stole the show. And then Jermaine Dupree was there. <laughs> Jermaine Dupree. Okay. All right. JD, we love you. But can we talk about this outfit for a minute? I looked at this outfit and I, I literally called John. I said, is he going to church on Easter? <laughs> and he had this, the little Lord Fauntleroy socks on. <laughs> So I, okay, all right, we love you, JD, all right. And then uh, Lil John and Ludacris showed up. Yeah! yeah. What? <laughs> and I took, for me, I wanted them out there the whole time. Like, I, I if it's one thing I could have said, I wish they would have jumped up right in the beginning. Um, they were so amazing. Uh, now, I gotta tell you, behind uh, Jermaine Dupri, I was like, is Will I Am gonna show up? Why is Kanye standing right there? <laughs> I thought that that was Kanye West. I, I, maybe I'm the only one, but that was Will I Am up there on stage with him. And Ursha, he just about everybody. He sang My Boo with Alicia Keys. <laughs> Let me tell you. And, you know, Alicia Keys started on the piano. She had this beautiful cape, then she took it off. I said, why you take so long to take that cape off? <laughs> she had all a grown woman body in that bodysuit. 
Oh, my gosh. And even Usher wasn't ready for all that grown body. <laughs> She came out there with all of the hips and the thighs, and he said, I'm gonna get all of this. He was hugging on her. He got to hugging on Alicia Keys. He couldn't stop. Oh, my God. You see, Usher was all up in that neck, boy. <laughs> and a lot of, you know, a lot of people thought that Usher was too handsy with Alicia, but I felt like they were just real. I felt it was like a really good friends, you know. They're entertainers, and John, you said that they recreated something. Yeah, and the, and the original video from my boo, they were hugging and making out in Times Square. So they just captured that on stage. Oh, they captured that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, and here's the thing. I say, look, it, you know, when you get on stage with Usher, that's what Usher gonna do. <laughs> you know, he creates that chemistry and that tension. Now, Alicia Keys' husband, Swiss Beats, he put. It was so much going on. He put out a statement saying that we were focused on the wrong thing. And I'm like, no, we wasn't, Swiss. <laughs> now, I'm gonna tell Swiss, what you need to be focused on is Usher, okay? <laughs> you need Swiss beats, you need to look at that picture and you can go, you know what you need to do when you get home. <laughs> you, be, you better get in there and nuzzle that neck, Swiss. <laughs> okay? We ain't focused on the wrong thing. So after Usher shut down the halftime show, he may have gotten married to longtime girlfriend Jennifer because they reportedly got a marriage license in the state of Nevada this week. And then they showed up at the after party. They both were wearing white and they were introduced as the newlyweds. So I say everybody got a ring that day. <laughs> they did. But I am gonna say this. Don't let marriage slow you down, Usher, because when you do your show and you come back on and I fly out there and you bring me on stage, I still expect to be seduced when I come to that concert. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show up with that picture of you and Alicia Keys and go do it like that. Do me like that. Right here. Right here, Usher. So... <laughs> let me tell you. Don't let me spend all that money going to Las Vegas, getting them tickets, and I get on stage and he like, no, I'm married. No, no, no. No, don't start that now. So it also, <laughs> it was a big night for Beyonce as well. <laughs> so shortly after Usher's halftime show, she starred in the Super Bowl ad. And at, look at, oh my goodness, look at that. At the end of the ad, she said, drop the new music. And that is exactly what she did. So Beyonce just announced a country-themed album. It's coming out March 29th. And she dropped two of the new songs. And I, but look, this is, look, is this her cover right here with the cowboy hat on? First of all, this outfit here. That outfit over there, I said, what in the Texas Hold'em is going on? First of all, you know, she did it, country music. She turning them on their heads. Trisha Yearwood, you need to stop cooking and put this on for Garth Brooks. <laughs> right here. This outfit right here. <laughs> Reba McIntyre, you should have worn this for the national anthem, girl. <laughs> when I tell you, Bay is about to turn country music on his knees. And then I'm looking at it, she got a heart on there, but some of the heart, three-fourths of the, a third of the heart is, where's the other part of the heart? <laughs> you know, she's strategic. Who got the other heart is what I want to know. And Beyonce, I, you know what? I, I, I love Beyonce so much. Whatever you do, we gonna be right there for it, for you. Okay? Matter of fact, I already put in my order for cowboy boots and a lasso. <laughs> already did it, so just as we speak, and uh, I'm so excited for that. But over the weekend, I don't know what y'all did for the weekend. Over the weekend, I went to New Jersey to see my friend Lunell do her stand-up at the NJ Pack. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Lunell, it was, it was Bill Bellamy hosted, it was Capone, it was Bruce Bruce. They were so awesome. Linnell was amazing on stage, but you know what was happening was the backstage party that was in her dressing room, because Whoopi Goldberg came. <laughs> Bevy Smith was there. Robin Montague, the comedian, was there. It was just like ladies' night out in the dressing room. And I hadn't seen Whoopi in so long, so I got to hang with Whoopi, and she was giving me advice, which I love. And, uh, but the problem was we went to the 9.30 show to see Lunell. You know, you go to these shows, 9.30 means it's gonna start at doggone 10.45, which is way too late for me. And, uh, it, it, you know, it was funny, cause we were there and 
it, they had an after party, and some dude was like, are you coming to the after party? I said, the after party's in my bed. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> okay, I know y'all mind was in the gutter for a hot second. You didn't get that joke. <laughs> no, I meant the after parties when I go home by myself. And I don't know what it is. Young people, y'all can tell me this. These guys today, they don't say, um, can I have your number? This, they go, why don't you uh, take my number down? And I'm going, I don't understand why guys do this. Because I, I didn't want to give my number out. I didn't know who he was. And so I, I really want to say, why am I going to take your number? I'm not, I'm not versed in that. And so the, the, my interns told me that if you don't want to give your number out, then you say, uh, just give me your Instagram. That's what you're supposed to say. Give me your Instagram. So I'm only going to use that one or two times because I really want your number. But... Um, <laughs> All I could think about, it was 9.30, and I was like, I just want to go home and go to bed. But if I'd have gotten there two hours earlier, I might have taken his phone number down. I just was tired. But I just want to say, Lunell, you were absolutely fantastic. Oh, absolutely fantastic. If you're in Vegas, go see Lunell at the Jimmy Kimmel Comedy Club. She's got a residence there. But I just also wanted to shout out somebody who's very special that is here in the audience today, one of my idols, gospel legend Jackie Clark. Stand up from the Clark sisters. It's here. Stand up, Jackie Clark. Oh, my God. Oh, you made my day. I can't sing no more. Sunshine. Oh. I can't, that's, that's my, you, I know I can't sing like you, Jackie, but that's my karaoke, like I love karaoke in your song, that's it. And the Clark sisters just won a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Grammy. Jackie Clark. Out here, Jackie Clark at Fashion Week, living your best life. You better go ahead, mama. I, and we are so happy to have you here. Thank you for stopping by. Tell your sisters and everybody else, we want y'all to come by. We got to have you sing, okay? Yeah. All right. You made my day. All right. So, y'all, rapper Nelly, he parties so hard <laughs> during Super Bowl weekend, he knocked his tooth out. Knock he posted a video on Instagram calling his girlfriend Ashanti to show her that he lost his tooth. Take a look. Babe, where I, is he? I did not knock my pimp out of my mouth. Look. <laughs> where is it? I found it for you when we the Miami. <laughs> man, I'm oh, a man. Oh, man. You still love me? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> I want to say I love Ashanti and Nelly together. Like, they broke up and now they're back together and they're so happy. But I'm going to tell you one thing. If you missing teeth, I'm out of there, okay? <laughs> I cannot take... <laughs> if it's one thing, you open your mouth and you're missing them side teeth right there and it's just all the gaps, all your... You know, everything, I... Mm-mm. But this is what I'm talking about. Like, this is what I said when I was talking about last week, because Shaq has said that you can't show your vulnerability to, to your girlfriends or women because they'll use it against you. This is why you have to make sure that this is the woman for you and your life before you get vulnerable, because... <laughs> like, that's a big deal. She said, what happened to it? I found this, this spare one in Miami. What happened to it? You, when, when your woman knows you got spare teeth <laughs> lying around, you don't want any woman to know you got spare teeth. <laughs> because if she happens... <laughs> I'm like... That's the one thing you do not want your woman to get mad because the first thing she gonna do is hide all your teeth. <laughs> you been looking around for all your spare teeth, okay? Or she gonna give a spare tooth and give one to each of her girlfriends and go, just hold on to it. <laughs> but I, I love Ashanti and Nelly together. They are so beautiful, so cute, y'all. So I hope, Ashanti, that you had a spare tooth in your purse or something <laughs> that you could have given Nelly. Y'all, we got a great show for you today. Because later on from the kitchen, we got Chef Katie Bigal is here. But I am excited because up next, two-time Grammy winner, Gloria Gaynor is here. <laughs> Sherry will be right back. I was 
petrified. I mean, we all know every word to that iconic song. And now in Gloria Gaynor, I Will Survive, the legendary singer is revealing just how much she survived to make her dreams come true. And let me tell y'all, this documentary is so powerful, I was up at 2 a.m. watching it because I could not stop. Take a look. For the last 40 years, I've been telling you I will survive. But I never told you how. It was a fun time. I will survive. Top the charts at number one. My fan base growing like wildfire. People were beginning to recognize me on the street. But that girl was lonely. Her husband was her manager. He called all the shots. I was so afraid of abandonment. I allowed myself to be controlled. Hang on, baby. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Yo, give it up for the one, the only, Gloria Gaynor. Oh my gosh, Gloria, can I tell you that that song, I Will Survive, I first heard it because my mother was going through a divorce from my dad, mm. and she, she, she was in so much pain, mm -hmm. but that song she played all of the time. I love it. I just, it, it just, and it has always just been uh, my anthem for making it through no matter what I've been going through. Like, do you hear stories like this oh, all yeah. the time? Oh, yeah, yeah, I hear stories like this all the time. As a matter of fact, I wrote a book. Well, yeah. we wrote a book. It's mm -hmm. called We Will Survive. 40 stories from family, friends, and, and fans that have um, made it through whatever they were going through with this power of the song. Oh, my gosh. You know, um, the first... When you saw I Will Survive, you knew it was special. Oh. Oh, you yeah. said when you, when, you got the, when you saw the first lyric, and you mm -hmm. said that God gave you that message about mm -hmm. it. When yeah. you, what was so special about it? Well, the fact that I had... I, when I first read the lyrics, I was uh, standing in a back brace. You when I recorded the song, I was in a back brace because I'd recently had surgery on my spine. Mm -hmm. And I was relating those lyrics to what I was going through. And so I, I'm thinking, this is, this is great. This is a timeless lyric. I was also relating to it the fact that my mother had recently passed away. Yeah. So I'm thinking, I'm relating these completely different things to this one song. And everybody's going to do that when they hear it. Yeah. Whatever it is they're going to say, they're going to draw strength from it. You know, and, and I, I'm going to unpack that because you were saying in the documentary you were on stage and mm -hmm. you kind of fell over a speaker. Mm -hmm. And then you, you finished the show. Yeah. And then you woke up in the hospital. You were paralyzed. You, you were you paralyzed in that hospital bed for three months. Mm -hmm. in, in our business, three months is a, is a, a long time because you, you feel like you're missing out on things. Oh, yeah. Did you feel like just life was over? You wouldn't be able to walk again? I'll tell you something. I completely forgot about the world. Yeah. The first time they allowed me to get up and walk, I walked to the window and I said, oh, there's life out there. Mm. There's people. Yeah. Just the buses and trains and cars and people are living. I just forgot about life altogether. The only thing I was concentrating on was what was I going to do with my career. Yeah. And, and because the record company had said they were going to not renew my contract. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, okay, where do I go from here? So you know how we all get to know the Lord when we, we get When trouble. you're going through it, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I was praying and everything and knowing God was going to do something but not knowing what. Mm -hmm. And then I get a call from the record company saying they're not renewing my contract. This is just done now. I'm really feeling like I'm, the bottom is falling out. And then I get a call. Well, I, like I said, I began to pray. I get another call saying, new president wants me to go out to California to record this song that he loves called Substitute. Yeah. I didn't much like the song. You didn't like Substitute? I didn't like no. Su no. Nah. Uh -huh. but, but, but I wanted to, my career to keep going, so I went out to do it. And when I got there, I asked the, pro the, the producers what would be the B-side. Yes. And they said, well, we don't, we're not sure what kind of songs you like. I like songs that are meaningful, thoughtful, touch people's hearts, have good melodies. They brought me the lyrics to this song. And this was I Will Survive. And I'm reading it, and I'm going, what are you, stupid? Oh, my gosh. You're going to put this on the B-side? 
do you know what I'm going through and what I'm able to relate to this song, how this song is already, I haven't even heard the lyrics yet, this song is uplifting me. Yes. I haven't heard the melody, and this song is uplifting me. And that is the song, I don't even remember the A side, the substitute. Well. I remember that this the B side. See, when you think it's, when you think it's A, and then God says it's B, boy, when I tell you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then, I'm watching this documentary. I learned so much about you because a lot of times you see entertainers and you go, wow, they're living the life. Mm -hmm. And fans saw you on top of the world with I Will Survive. Your name was mentioned everywhere. You got a crown for being the queen of disco. But you say that you were lonely. You were married mm -hmm. to the love of your life. But mm -hmm. you said that you were lonely in your own home. Mm -hmm. In what was going on? In a marriage, so-called marriage, I found out you can't be married by yourself. Mm. You know? Mm. And, and, and I, something happened. I got sick. I had a migraine headache. I felt like my head yeah. was going to split apart. And he wasn't willing to take me to the hospital. You had to go to the hospital? He I had to go to the hospital you? by myself. And I thought, God said, I'm going to have to drop a house on my baby girl because she's stupid. Mm. Okay. Sometimes you gotta do that, because y'all been married 25 years. 25 years. I'm yeah. trying to make it work, trying to make it work. Like I said, you can't make it work by yourself. Yeah. Okay? So when that happened, I was like, okay, I'm done. But it's then done. being married to, to your husband, you said something so profound, which took me through what I was going through. It was a fear of being alone. Yeah. You, why you didn't leave. Exactly. Earlier. Yes. What was that? What were you going through that you didn't want to be alone? Well, I, I, I was sexually abused three times as a child. Mm. At five, at 12, and at 17. Yeah. And that makes you feel unlovable. It makes you feel um, unnecessary. It makes you feel unworthy yeah. of love. And, and my mother, my, my father left my mother when I was, she was five months pregnant with me. Mm. And I know that's where I got that fear of abandonment. Yeah. So put on top of that all of this other trauma and things that had happened to me. I was afraid of being abandoned. I was afraid of being alone. I had a terrible fear of being alone. And you finally, you stepped out on faith because you said I was already alone. And you yeah. stepped out on that faith. Yeah. Now, it, this is what I, I love. Now, you've been doing disco. Mm -hmm. You went through it when people didn't like disco anymore. And the documentary, this documentary was so excellent. It shows the years-long fight because you wanted to make a gospel album. Yes. And you faced so much resistance mm -hmm. make, trying to make a gospel album. Yeah. What, why do you think you, that, the, that the gospel industry didn't want to help you out in this? Because I was a disco queen. Okay. You know, and I mean, you know, I'm one-dimensional. Mm. in their hearts and minds, apparently. Yes. And I wanted to make this gospel album. First of all, I feel like I was called to do that. And because I had spent a year kind of in, uh, um, alone with God because of the things that I've gone through after my divorce and all of that. Yes. And um, I thought that he wanted me to do gospel music. Well, I found out that, yeah, he wanted me to do gospel music, but he also wanted me to include the people that I'd been singing to all along. Mm. So it took time for that to happen, and I didn't recognize that. I wasn't, I was really trying to get this done. Sometimes we don't know God's timing is perfect. Oh, it's so you know? perfect. And so I, yeah, I, I struggled to get my previous management to agree with me on that, and he didn't. God had it in, he knew what he, he was He had a plan for you. He had a plan. Now, when this gospel album Testimony came out, after you faced all that resistance, then you collaborated with folks, Yolanda Adams, you just, uh, you finally came out, you won a Grammy. You mm -hmm. won a Grammy. Mm -hmm. When everybody yeah. said no. Yeah. When everybody said no. Did you feel, when you were holding that Grammy after all of those no's, did you feel vindicated? I felt vindicated, I felt validated, because, like I said, my previous manager was, when we get the Grammy, then we'll do the gospel album. Mm. When we do the Grammy, we'll do the gospel album. Well, as God would have it, we didn't do the gospel, get the Grammy until we did the gospel album. That's what I'm talking about. God will have his way. God will have his way. Oh, my gosh. And, yeah, okay, you can't go anywhere because I still need to talk to y'all. Up next, we got more with Gloria Gaynor, including her take on Usher Super Bowl halftime show. Don't miss it. <laughs> We'll be right back. Good time, good time. I am back with Gloria 
Greg Gaynor, there's so much I want to ask you about your documentary. Um, but I, I, I wanted to ask you about Usher because he's the biggest thing happening right now. Usher, Gloria, blew mm. plans away at the Super Bowl. So what did you think? I, I never thought I could be a cougar. Oh, you never thought you <laughs> well, well, well. We are all cougars over here. Mm. Yes. Did you like him when he was doing, he had the skates, he was skating? Yeah, did, yeah. Yeah. I like, uh, the skating was great, okay. but I like dancing. I'm, I, I, what a lot of people don't know about me is I'm more passionate about dancing than I am about singing. Okay, oh really? Yeah, yeah I, I have seen dancing that made me cry. I've never heard anybody sing that made me cry. Okay, well, Usher, even with his shirt off, he make you cry, so he did. <laughs> Okay, so this is what I want to know. And I, I, you know, because I'm single too, you single. Valentine's Day is coming. Mm -hmm. Are you open to falling in love again? I'm open to whatever God has for me. Okay. Oh. That's weird. Now, see, me, I'm open, like, I'm open to, like, I could fall in love again, companionship, but as soon as you try to slide a ring on it, I'm running. I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. trying to, mm, mm -hmm. But, you know, open to love. That, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Now, I got some crushes in my life. I mm -hmm. got uh, Lenny Kravitz is my crush. Mm -hmm. Trevor Noah mm -hmm. is my crush. Mm -hmm. Now, I hear that you got four male crushes at the top of your list. Mm -hmm. I call who them are, my husbands. You call them your husbands? All right, now. So who are your husbands? OK, well, they used to be Denzel Washington, but he got married. OK, he got I, married. I met him. I met him. So once you, you know, then the reality. Yeah, you got to, yeah, fantasy, once they get married, you got to, yeah. But the fantasy is gone after Yes, that. absolutely. So, but I, I, he's nice. Him and his wife, they're a wonderful couple. OK. Um, but uh, Pierce Brosnan. P oh, Pierce Brosnan. Mm -hmm. Me likey Pierce Brosnan. Mm -hmm. All right, now. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and Morris Chestnut. Morris Chestnut. Mm -hmm. We like Morris Chestnut. Yeah. Is that Sean Connery over there? Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Ooh, we got two 007s. Two 007s. And, yes, and yes. Who, who that man, Ray, Ray Idris. Did? Idris Elba. Sent me a birthday wish. Wait a minute. So Idris sent you a birthday sent me a wish? Birthday what did he say? Video. He did. Yes, he was wishing me a happy birthday. He wished you a happy birthday. Now, you know that Idris is okay because his wife, Sabrina, said that's our husband. She said, she yeah, say she that? sure did, Gloria. All right, now. Yeah, so we good. We good for a good thruple with Idris, girl. <laughs> oh, you just made a gospel album. I'm sorry, girl. I'm... <laughs> but you know, God know my heart. He know my heart. So I gotta tell, I gotta ask you this. I get mistaken for Octavia Spencer all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, do you get mistaken for anybody by your fans? No. No, they they know. They know Gloria Gaynor no, when they see. Not that I know of. At least they haven't had never tell me. <laughs> <laughs> you look just like Gloria Gaynor. I know when you walk down the street. And I know you know. So you're 80 years old. You mm -hmm. look amazing. <laughs> you are just <laughs> <laughs> the melanin of it all. So, and you show no signs of slowing down. Why? Why? I know that's right. I'm gonna live till I die. That, you know what? Yes. yes. Life is too short. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. can I ask you, you, you know, you, you are the queen of reinvention. Mm. What's next for Gloria Gaynor? Well, I have some more music coming. Okay. Writing with some great writers who've written for Miley Cyrus and, and Megan Trainor and Dolly Parton and, Ooh. yeah, and, and yeah. Great writers, and we got some really, really good stuff coming. Okay. So that's happening. Um, there's going to be a a um, uh, docudrama. Yes, not, it's not a docudrama. Well, is that what it's called? Docudrama? Yeah, a docudrama. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Of, okay, of, coming of out my life, yeah. of your life. Yeah, yeah. When I see this documentary, so good, and I didn't say this at the beginning, but you also got me through when I was going through a very painful divorce, mm. and I would listen to "I Will Survive" because I was on the Love floor it. in tears, and you mm. got me through when everybody said no to me. I got through it with "I Will Survive," I and I thank you. you. You never know how you impact people that you don't mm. even know, mm. Gloria. Mm. So I wanted to mm. say thank you for that. And I see you are such a survivor. It is, it's surviving looks yeah. good on you. Surviving and being blessed. Oh, yeah. You past surviving, you in the blessed mode. Oh, yeah. I love it. Y'all, Gloria Gaynor, I Will Survive is in theaters and only for one night. And you have got to see it. It is tomorrow, February 13th. So you gotta buy your tickets now and you will not regret it. I'm telling you, if you don't walk out of there feeling like you can't conquer the world after watching I Will Survive, you will be able to conquer the world. So thank you, Gloria. And up next,
chef Katie Lee is here with the perfect meal for Valentine's Day. Keep it right here. Sherry, we'll be right back. Smells good over here. <laughs> I gotta tell you, love is in the air, and we have just the treat to elevate your Valentine's Day feast. And my next guest is the host of the hit show, The Kitchen. Please welcome Katie Lee Beagle. Hey. Thank you so much for having me. Girl, I, look, I, I'm so glad you are here because I am hungry. Doesn't it smell good? It There's smells. something about the smell of a steak cooking. Yes, it like, does. Just gets you going. Girl, it just smells like love all over here. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, Valentine's Day is this week, and you and your husband, Ryan, y'all have been together for eight years. Yes, Congratulations. Time goes by so fast. It does. Yeah, it really so does. you got to tell me, eight years, what's the secret sauce, Mama? Well, I mean, he's kind of a hunk. Uh, so yeah, that, yes, we like that. So that definitely helps. You know what it is? We just laugh all the time. We don't think, take things too seriously. And we make a real conscious effort to always speak kindly to each other. That's good. And I, I think that that really matters. And it, it sets an example for our daughter. Then. For your daughter, yeah. Iris. It absolutely does. Now, it, okay, this is not going to be burning while I'm talking to I you. Know. Is it? Okay, so we let's take it out of the skillet. The I just I want to hold it because I want to ask you some more I questions. I want, I want to say, look, because I don't want my food to burn. Uh, you can scan the QR code on your screen for all of today's recipes. Okay, mm -hmm. so what are we making today? Okay, so we're making a ribeye okay, with a favorite. red wine mushroom sauce mm. to go on top. Yes. This is perfect for Valentine's Day because it's like having a steakhouse at home and it's really an easy recipe. Ooh, I mean, girl. look at this. First step is you want to really season that steak. Put mm -hmm. a lot of salt on it, let yes. it sit at room temperature for about 20 minutes and then cook it a couple minutes for okay sec. okay right, so take it out and put it on that platter okay i thought you wanted to go never ask all yes, right yes we don't want it to overcook okay and while the meat rests we're gonna make our sauce we're gonna make so the sauce we've got some butter to go in oh nothing like butter yep. yep we've got some shallots put the to go shallots in there. in there and we've got some mushrooms mushy going rooms. in there Mushy yes. rooms. Yes, so we're gonna let that cook down. The Ooh, mushrooms will start to release all their water, and then we're gonna release add Release is what I say, come on. <laughs> we're gonna add in our red wine. Add the so red wine. So put in some of that. So we're using kind of wild. This is my wine. It's organic. Oh, this is your wine. This yes. is, oh, kind of wild and wine. It's zero sugar, too. Oh, so it's zero sugar? Yes. Is this yes. the kind you can drink out put the a, bottle? Put a little bit more in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. look at that. Oh, I'm right. liking it. So you're gonna let that cook down. Okay. The alcohol starts to evaporate off. It gets nice. Yes. And kind of has this wonderful shape to it. I love it. We're gonna add some more of these mushrooms in there. And then we're gonna mount the sauce by adding in some butter. Now, while you add in the butter, because you so, were saying you and Ryan have been together eight years, your daughter mm -hmm. Iris, how old is she now? Iris so is- So Iris is three. Three years old. Now yes. she's your special Valentine. Oh, she's my Valentine mm -hmm. every day. I love that girl so much. We Does are just so obsessed too? with her. Does she yes, like we made with pancakes you? this weekend. That's her favorite thing to cook. <laughs> and she gets up at the counter and she makes a little mess. Of course, but that's she's the best part. To. Yes. Okay, now you're stirring this up. Now, mm -hmm. I love this. Now, you know what? Congratulations, because you are on the 37th season of The Kitchen. Yes. 37, 37 seasons. 37 seasons. We love our viewers so much. We're so lucky to be I doing love that, that show. It's been 10 years. And tell and me, what's your really favorite part? My favorite part of my co-host. Oh, yeah. We have such a great relationship. We laugh so much. There's mm -hmm. so much fun. So we have a really, really good time. All right. So once this butter nice. melts, the butter at the end makes it nice and shiny and glossy. Okay. So I've got some here that's already so done. Pour it on the ribeye. Pour it right on Ooh, there. Oh, that looks so good. And this yeah. is with your wine? Yes. I love yes. no sugar. Yes, it's so zero organic. sugar. Organic. It's free mm -hmm. from any of those harmful additives yeah, and or preservatives. So you can drink it and not have a hangover. The okay. Next day, All right, because I'm I drinking like. both, girl. What? Mm -hmm. And so you enjoy that steak. What do you think? Oh, girl, this ribeye is so damn good. Oh my gosh. That's the reaction I like, good. And your wine right. is great. Thank so you what do so we have much, here? So now we're gonna make a quick little dessert. So mm -hmm. I'm just doing chocolate covered strawberries. Oh my That's god. That's all I ever want on Valentine's Day, chocolate covered mm -hmm. strawberries. And you know, you go to the store and buy these, they're like five bucks each. Just make them at home. The strawberries? So put a little skewer mm -hmm. in the strawberry. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> 
No, no, keep going, keep going. I've got some melted chocolate chips here. I do it in a double boiler. You put the double broiler. And then you add in some coconut oil. And that's what makes the chocolate I love set that. up and get nice and hard on there. And I could do dark chocolate too in there. Yes, uh -huh. dark chocolate. You can do this with white chocolate too. Girl, this ribeye is good. And so we... I love it, I love it, I love it. Dip your strawberries in there. Dip this is a good one to make with kids too. Mm -hmm. You know, you fill you up on the with steak. The uh -huh. and then... <laughs> Girl, I don't care if I don't have a Valentine's. I'm gonna have this ribeye. Mm -hmm. That's all the Valentine you need is the ribeye, right? And the that chocolate covered it. strawberries. Mm -hmm. And they look good. How does that taste? Yes. <laughs> and there you go. And so you, you just drink let a... those set up. These make a great gift. Mm-mm. Girl. <laughs> drink at so we can oh, toast. Yes, we gotta have a toast, right? Yeah, we gotta have a drink. Come on, look. Okay. Come on, lady. Where's yours at? So here we go. We got a nice little cab here Ooh, for toast. this is good. I'm gonna just pretend you a man. I Thank you, it. darling. <laughs> mm, I Happy love it. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's, booby. Yo, oh my gosh. Katie Lee, thank you for being here. Hold up one second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for more info on these recipes, go to SherryShowTV.com and we'll be right back. I love you. Thank you. We'll be right back. Friday is round two of my Funny Over 50 contest. We're going to meet our next two semifinalists, Juanita Lolita Mills and Linda Kurloff. Now, our all-star panel of judges will be Judy Gold, Rolanda Watts, and guest judge Shonda Pierce. And the final winner of the contest will be spotlighted in my Laugh Lounge and perform in at least one of my pretty funny and tired tour comedy shows. Tune in this Friday. We'll be right back. <laughs> We'll be right back. Be a part of my studio audience. Go to SherryShowTV.com for tickets. We'll be right back. <laughs> Sherry, we'll be right back. Tomorrow, Jane Krakowski will be here. So join us then for the best time in daytime. Bye.